Hey guys, before this video begins, I want to give a quick thank you to Replica419. We had a mini conversation in the comments on my analysis of the Bandit Rifle. Thanks to him for correcting my TTK statistics on that weapon. As a result, I have been reevaluating ways on my end to better record st statistics more accurately going forward in Halo Infinite. I should also mention to please check the description on any weapon I analyze in Halo Infinite as I will update on anything I got wrong in the video or update any changes 343 make. Another thanks goes out to Hyde B for letting me know that I can get a closer, accurate range value using the mark system in Halo Infinite, which I've never thought of before. As a result, this means going forward, I'll be able to give you guys a close to accurate range value on weapons. Now with all that being said, enjoy the analysis. Hey guys, Blazin here. Welcome to my analysis on the VK-78. The VK-78 is manufactured by Vakara Gezm? Gezbitch? Gezm? That. This is a fully automatic rifle that fires 6.5mm rounds. It is distinctive among other rifles in that it does not share the common bullpup configuration of weapons like the MA40 and BR-75, in which the magazine is inserted behind the trigger. Instead, the magazine well is located at an angle directly in front of the trigger guard. The design of the weapon emphasizes ergonomics and reliability. VK-78s were employed as early as 2495, during which time they were selected by the Colonial Military Authority to replace aging stocks of HMD-38s in then current service. By 2560, the VK-78 was employed by UNSC Armed Forces personnel during the Battle of Zeta Halo. The VK-78 has a matte black, gray, and olive drab finish, with a prominent white stripe across the weapon's front end. The weapon features numerous markings, which include a UNSC logo located at the rear of the gun, as well as Vekera Gesm's logo on the grip. Vekera Gesm's logo again located next to the cheek rest, along with the serial number. Some more trays located on the magwell. Caliber specification is located on the body, as well as a small UNSC emblem. Lastly, all the way in the front, says VK-78 Commando. The VK-78 features an adjustable stock and cheek rest. The fire selector is also where you'd expect. Right is on safe, top is on single shot, and left is on full auto. Right above that is a built-in ammo counter, which also has adjustable controls. Moving swiftly along, at the bottom right corner, is the magazine release. Above that is the bolt catch release, and all the way at the top is the bolt itself. And finally, the gun features rails located at the front on both sides, as well as one on the top. Speaking of rails, the top rail is already being utilized with a recon sight, which is set to a 2x magnification by default. There is also a front sight, but it's useless since the recon sight is the optic that's going to be used. Moving on to in-game stats, the VK-78 holds 20 rounds in the magazine, plus 120 extra spare rounds. The rate of fire I got was 420 rounds per minute. Nice. Smoke weed every day. Reload speed was around 2.24 seconds. The tactical reload speed was around 1.63 seconds. Max effective range is around 36.8 meters. And the range while using the recon sight is around 73.3 meters. 
Moving on to damage output, it takes 8 shots to break shields and 7 shots to health. Totaling a 15 shot skill. Or 8 shots to break shields and 1 shot to the head, resulting a 9 shot kill. Body shot TTK is around 2.15 seconds. Headshot TTK is around 1.3 seconds. So what do I think of the Commando? Well, I really don't like this weapon a lot anymore. For those of you that are still playing Halo Infinite, know that what I just analyzed isn't the original balance of this gun. The Commando has been adjusted a couple times up to this point. That's why I put V3 in the title, because it's not the original performance. Truthfully, I liked the first version of this gun when the game came out, because while the commando was hard to use, the player was rewarded with a faster TTK than the assault rifle and battle rifle. I can go on a huge tangent regarding this gun, but just so you know, this gun isn't useless. It's still usable, it's just that there isn't much reason to pick it up. The advantages versus disadvantages of this gun aren't significant. As a result, the Commando has been watered down to just another battle rifle on the field. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, sorry the Commando ended up being so boring, and until next time, peace.